How's it going world? This is Grant with Retro Games More coming at you with a quick video. I wanted to show the new item that I just purchased, uh, the Retro Entertainment System. It's a NES clone system. Uh, the reason I got this is because I don't have uh, an original NES anymore. Uh, the one that I did have I gutted and did for the custom build. I just haven't come, got around to buying another original one. Uh, uh, I will invest in another original one sometime soon, but I wanted to play uh, Play some old NES titles on, you know, semi-original hardware. <laughs> so, anyways, um, this isn't really a review of the system. This is a what not to do when you get a system. <laughs> uh, this system runs off of 6 volts uh, current, and I had a 12 volt plug that goes to a external hard drive in my bag with the 6 volt that's for this system originally. Uh, I was plugging it up to uh, you know, play some old titles and I accidentally plugged up the external hard drive um, power supply instead of the power supply that it came with. So when I did that, actually I'll show you the inside real quick, it's kind of interesting to see how they shrinked down the system from the ODNAS to this. It's only three PCBs. Uh, you have it for the input uh, and the on and off uh, reset on one PCB, and then you have the uh, the pin pin readers here, the pin sets here, uh, and underneath here you'll actually see the processor, or, you know, the all-in-one chip under here, and right here is the power supply and AV out, and this is what got hit. So as soon as I plugged up that uh, power supply, I heard it pop and I smelt it, and I was like, okay probably popped a resistor, uh, you know, I can go in there and look at it and see if it's a two lead resistor, you know, which is these right here, you probably can't see this, I'm using my phone to record this so it doesn't focus very well, anyways, so it wasn't a resistor, it was a transistor, it was this transistor right here, this big boy three lead transistor, uh, it is model number 5609, and I uh, just Face palmed it as soon as I did that. Yeah, it, it sucks. But the good news is, is that I do have a uh, comparable transistor to this one. And so what I want to do is desolder and resolder and test it out and see if it works. And I wanted to take some video feed to show you and see if it actually works. Now, where's my other transistor at? Misplace anything. So, all right, so I'm going to desolder the other one and resolder this one and then we'll see how it works. Works. Okay, ignore the mess here. This is a computer shop. <laughs> so this is a old power supply from a, if I'm not mistaken, an old cinema display for a Mac. Uh, and it, the power supply went bad on it, but it has that transistor we need. You probably can't see it on this camera though. It's right there. So I'm going to desolder that, and we are going to solder that back on. It is a comparable one. It's the model number... Uh, SD1207T, uh, 1207T, and it is comparable, and it should work, uh, and I'll put the site that I'm referencing, I'm not an electronic engineer by any means, so I had to, you know, reference different data sheets and everything, I'm, it's not something that I knew right off the bat, uh, it's called alltransistors.com is the reference site that I'm using, there's 65, uh, comparable transistors to the one in the NES clone system, though, so now I was lucky enough to look through all my dead parts and find one, so I'm going to desolder that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first step is, is, this will be kind of a tutorial, but not really, is I need to get access to the other transistor, so let me get some protective RF shield or whatever the hell that is off the bottom of that. So we need to pinpoint where the three pins are from this transistor. And it's not too hard to do. Should be these three right here from reference. I think that should be it. So we're going just to do the old way. I, actually, I tell you what, what we'll do is we'll do a solder wick. I'm going to add a little bit of resin, a little bit of flux to the bottom of the leads. And that'll make it where we can solder wick, solder wick the solder out of it. So what we'll do is we'll put a little flux on the three pins here. Now this is some old lead solder probably, so it should work okay. We'll do is get a little bit of flux on the copper braid. Isolate those pins again. Okay. Should be these three pins here. I'm going to whip those up. Oh yeah, good old solder smell. 
And you can see the copper braid is actually wicking all the oats are up, and that should be it. We should have a removable transistor on the other side. Let's see if I can get my hands on it. Keep in mind that the solder wick heats up the board as well. Woo. There it is. Simple as that. We use solder wick and we get the transistor out, and there it is. It's the D1207T, and we're going to resolder. All right, so here is the NES clone in my hands. How minuscule that actually is. It's insane. Now, the nice thing about this clone is it actually uses the original controller port, so you can use the original uh, NES controllers. Um, nice tactile switches, six pins, and it's, it's all fairly well soldered. You know, it's not perfect, it's from China, so. But okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do pretty much exactly the same thing. We're gonna desolder this old transistor. So we're gonna slightly flex it up a little bit just to help that solder pull. It's really not necessary, it'll probably pull on its own, but I just like covering all bases. And I'll give you some close-up pictures in this video uh, of all the transistors, because I know the camera's not getting the best. Okay, this isn't the safest. If you're going to do this, take precautions, wear gloves, wear masks, I just do this all the time. Okay. All the solder there. Solder wick. When it works, it works well. But sometimes it doesn't quite do what you want it to do. Okay. So we want to remember that orientation. You can see the flat side is actually facing the outside of the board. So that's what we want to resolder the new one in that orientation. So. Let's see. Solder, there we go. All right. So this is the old chip right here. This is a 5609. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, so this is the old transistor and this is the new one, but uh, in all actuality, the one that we're replacing it with is much older. <laughs> but it, if it works, it works. I could have ordered it offline. I mean, the thing is, is I only paid, uh, I think it was like $19.50, and that's shipped uh, for this unit. I could have just ordered it again. I got it really fast in the mail. But, you know, or I could order the transistors and order got them from China, but that would have took forever. So, what we're going to do is we're going to line them back up. And since we use that solder wick, it's really nice and easy. It goes through. And what we will do is I'm going to solder me off a piece of solder here. It's a fire hazard waiting to happen. Okay. And we just line those pins up and we solder it. It should be as simple as that. This is the most unprofessional way to do it, <laughs> but as long as I can get one of the legs to stick in there, then I can line it up. Okay. Okay. Well, of course, I do that. Okay. All right. Should be as simple as that. It's a little uneven, but as long as it's making contact, which it is, it works good. So get in there, I'm going to reassemble it, and then we're going to test it. So, stay tuned. Alright, so we're going to reassemble this unit. And, it, and I actually tested it before I blew the, the DC jack, or blew the power board on the NES. I tested it here, and I tested it with my reproduction cart. And I, to my surprise, I, wasn't, I didn't have high expectations that it would work with a reproduction cart. But it, it worked great. And that was the main reason, since I got my Doki Doki UNG cart from NES Reproductions, I just really wanted to play it. All right. I'm going to have to re-solder the LED leads back to the top of the lid there. It's a really nifty little device. I'll put the link to the uh, eBay auction in the description below, and you can go check it out. Which can't be it for twenty dollars shipped, and I got it, got it fairly quick. Okay, I'm gonna wire strip right yet. All right, we're gonna strip these wires, resolder this back into place. All right, over to the solder station. Okay, just desolder these old plates off here.
probably best to tin your connections first, so tin the wires with solder. So I'll do that real quick, and then I'll make it. Essentially what you do is you just line it up and you tin the wire with the with solder. And that makes it connect a little bit better. There we go. Didn't have to be perfect. Come on, solidify. There we go. Alright, should be all back together. Put it back in place. Screw the screws back in the bottom. There it is. Alright, stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and plug it up and see if it works. Okay, so let's plug the unit up. Now, if you will, if you are buying this unit, just, uh, Keep in mind that you know it's not it's not an amazing unit by any means. It's you know twenty dollars. You know you get you get what you pay for essentially. It plays the games and it plays them well enough. And okay, make sure you got the right power supply. Six volt, two hundred and fifty milliamps. I'm going to use this one this time. So all right, let me get a free plug and we're going to plug it up to the wall and we'll test it out. The wall and we'll test it out. Okay. Let's plug her up. Let's move her over a little bit. Excuse the really crappy camera work. I'm having to do this one myself here. Plug it in. As long as I don't hear a pop, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> All right. Now, I probably will do a review of this unit. And hold on one second. Let me get my controller. Controller. Okay, so I got Doki Doki Uenchi in here. I'll show you the controller real quick. This is the controller it comes with. Now, this is the biggest problem people have with clone units generally, uh, besides a couple compatibility issues. This right here, if you can look at the buttons, there's B. A, B, B, which is, you know, auto B and auto A. The issue is, is this should be B and this should be A. Because when you're holding the controller, let me switch out hands real quick. Okay, when you're holding the controller, your thumb automatically, well, most, most people's thumbs automatically default like that. So this would be your B button and this would be A. It's the back of your thumb, like that. So that's the main issue with this controller, is the way it's oriented. I wish I could rotate it around, but this is one solid PCB and... There's there's no, you know, cut off or anything like that. I imagine we could mod it, but, you know, I'm not going to put that much work into it. So, we'd have to get used to that. But, like I said, you can use original NES controllers in it. It does have the slow, so that's the one that, you know, uh, does pause, pause on, pause off, alternates, uh, pausing. So, it's not really, like, slow or anything like that. Uh, the D-pad is off of it. It's not, you know, it's not the best D-pad in the world. But, you know what, you, you get what you pay, and as long as you can use the original hardware, you're usually pretty good, so... All right, let's plug her up. Okay. All right, well, I'll test it out and see how it goes. All right, I'm getting a red light. That could be a good sign. There it is. Work. So that transistor worked perfect. And honestly, looking at the picture, the picture looks better now that I traded out that transistor. Oh, it does. It, yeah, doesn't it? It looks a lot more clear. Before the transistor that was in it, I'm guessing it maybe it was a cheap, a cheap transistor, uh, the picture was a little fuzzy, but this actually looks fairly sharp. So, there it is. This is my reproduction game. But yeah, alright guys, I appreciate you watching, checking out my video, and I will probably do a, you know, I don't know if I'll do a review of the unit or anything, but I'm going to be using this along with, with a TV recording card in my computer to capture game footage because I like capturing it off of the original, you know, as close to original hardware as I can. I could use a ROM, but sometimes with ROMs you'll see glitchy graphics and stuff like that. It's kind of hard to play with one hand, so. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching again. Uh, you know, uh, leave me any type of feedback, you know, uh, keep an eye out for future videos. I appreciate it. Take it easy.